Well, greetings, printing enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is T-Doll 3D in my new work area. Uh, today's episode, I want to invite you to Maker Faire Nova, which is going to be on June 2nd from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at George Mason University. Uh, if you are anywhere in the striking distance of the D.C. area, uh, go ahead and check it out. It's a fantastic event. This is my fifth year doing a table there. For my fifth Maker Faire Nova, my project, I wanted to do something big. And I wanted to combine 3D printing with needlepoint, specifically plastic canvas. If you're not familiar with plastic canvas, you go to the craft store and you buy these sheets, these plastic grids, and then you cut it into the shape that you want and you use a needle and yarn to go ahead and stitch it to make patterns and artwork that way. So what I ended up doing was a over three foot wide gray blue heron. It's made out of 12 3D printed pieces. That's the black outlines. And all the colors that you see, the panels, are plastic canvas pieces, 130 of them in total. With the 3D modeling, I did use Blender 2.78. I haven't tried the new beta version yet. And basically I used Bezier curves and I did a lot of tracing out of the cattails and you know uh, manipulating trying to figure out how I wanted to do the heron um, and just went ahead and used that to, to make my lines. Uh, once I felt like I had a good outline of what I wanted, I went ahead and converted these curves to mesh and I made faces and I went into the materials tab and uh, gave it colors just to try to kind of visualize how everything was going to come together. When I liked it, I couldn't just have these faces of colors. I needed to translate that into these black outlines to hold uh, my plastic canvas, my stitch work. And with that, um, I basically used the inset tool. When you're using the inset tool in Blender, uh, you do have the ability to type in exact dimensions if you have an idea exactly how thick you want a line to be, which in this case I certainly did. Uh, the only problem is those dimensions, it's applying to your object when it was a 1-1-1 one, one, one scale. So if when you looked at your scale on the um, property shelf, if it said like 1.378, you know, it wasn't exactly a one scale. Um, it was going to multiply those measurements to, to make it uh, match that scale. Okay, long story short, you really don't have to worry about that. There's a, a, a quick and easy workaround in Blender. Um, so what you do is you, you scale your object to the size that you want. Um, and in this case, I had it over three feet wide. And once I'm satisfied with that, I could go to the object menu click on apply and click scale and this takes a snapshot of what your object is right now the sizing and it says okay this is going to be the scale one 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 and at that point when i go and i type in a specific inset dimension boom i am going to get exactly what i type in with this heron i used insets of four millimeters and because there's a panel on either side of the line that's two faces that are getting inset each line was a total of eight millimeters thick. After I do the inset, I don't want these colored faces anymore. I, I don't want that to print out. Uh, that's, I want that to be empty so I can replace it with my needlework. And there, all I did was switch into edit mode. I highlighted the faces I didn't want and I deleted them. Now that I had all my outlines, I went ahead and extruded it. And in this case, I gave it a thickness of two millimeters. Um, it was an aesthetic choice. I wanted something very flat that was gonna be flush with the needlework, um, but this is a big piece. And two millimeters isn't quite, um, it's not gonna support itself. So if you're looking of, uh, to do a similar project and you wanna make sure your piece is sturdy enough to support its own weight, you're gonna to wanna to go to a bigger thickness than the two millimeters. All right, now I have this giant frame, um, but I don't have a printer that can print the whole thing. And so what I needed to do is split it into a whole bunch of pieces. Uh, most of these were done on the CR-10. So I picked um, uh, the pieces, the maximum dimensions I used were 280 millimeters by 280 millimeters. 
There's a lot of ways to attack this. Um, I think the community builds, like uh, We the Builders, I think they use a tool called NetFab to sl slice their models up into more manageable pieces. Uh, in my case, I just used Blender. I created some cubes that were 280 by 280 and um, you know set them up um, so they're all like nice and adjacent. And I used the Boolean intersection modifier. And so I was telling Blender, okay, take the intersection of the outline and this cube and that's going to be my piece one one and the next one's going to be one two and the next one's going to be one three and so on printing was pretty straightforward these are flat pieces um, one thing that was helpful for me was you know i kept my outline flat right so it didn't matter which side was going to be the front and which side was the back so i made the first layer be the back of the piece um, that way, if I noticed any kind of imperfections, I didn't have to abort the whole print because that part's not going to be seen. Now, once I had these frames printed, I also used them as the template for my plastic canvas pieces. All I did was take the print, flip it upside down on my plastic canvas, and I used a Sharpie to trace the shape. Um, I learned, you know, since I'm cutting 130 of these pieces, I learned to color code, use different color Sharpies, so I knew what color uh, to st stitch a set. And then I stitched, and stitched, and stitched, and stitched. And I do have to give some thank yous to some helpers. Uh, this is a three generation project. Uh, my mother stitched a panel and she got a little creative herself and made a, a weave. Uh, my oldest son, he helped stitch. And not only that, uh, he did that on the school bus on the way to a field trip. And one of his classmates took an interest in learning Plastic Canvas, so he helped too. So thank you, Gio, for Mrs. Hart's second grade class. And then finally, my husband surfaced and he learned some needlework. He learned the continental stitch and he contributed a piece as well. So I, there was some inspiration from the Make It and Fake It channel where I'm making all these pieces, I'm stitching 130 panels, and I'm not entirely sure how I was going to put it all together, but I had confidence that I would figure a way or some way out. Uh, one thing that was helpful was um, as I started working on this piece, I started getting more and more attached to it, I was particularly enamored with the textures of the different stitches, and I decided, okay, I'm going to go ahead and invest in a custom frame for it. I'm going to go ahead and do that because I want to keep this piece afterwards. and that probably made my assembly um, journey significantly easier having that custom frame. With ordering the frame, I used a company called American Frames. Um, there is pretty easy. I would just put in the measurements of my artwork, which I measured again and again and again and again because I was scared of you know misordering. Uh, the only thing I had to be careful about is, I hope I'm saying this right, uh, when you're looking at frames, you want to consider the rabbit height, R-A-B-B-E-T, um, and that's going to dictate how uh, thick your artwork can be. So in this case, on their website, uh, on their FAQs, I found out that the acrylic uh, covering was one-eighth of an inch, and the cardboard backing was a one-eighth of an inch, and so I wanted to make sure whatever rabbit height I used in my frame it was going to accommodate that as well as um, the thickness of my 3D, 3D printed pieces, the plastic canvas with the yarn. Uh, so in my case, I went ahead and picked a frame that had a three quarter inch rabbit height to give me um, a lot of working room there. One of the best parts that happened with ordering this frame is it came with giant pieces of cardboard, which were as big as the frame itself, which meant that it was gonna be as big as my 3D printed outline, right? This was tremendous because I uh, used one piece of cardboard as a staging area and I went ahead and put uh, my outlines on that cardboard and started gluing them. I used a combination of a Gorilla Gel Super Glue and then on the back I used some electrical tape to give it a little more uh, reinforcement in the back. Now, the fumes from the glue did discolor uh, my frame, my outline frame a little bit. But I had a second piece of cardboard that shipped with the custom frame. So, you know, I have, already have my piece on one uh, cardboard. I took another piece of cardboard, put it on top of it, and flipped it. And there you go. And I was able to go ahead and paint and, and you know, get rid of the discoloration. Um, so here's the thing. 
the Gorilla Glue and the electrical tape, uh, it gave the outline enough stability where I can shift it around, I can slide it and move it, it all stays together. Um, I don't think it would have the stability if I went to pick it up and hold it up for everybody. I think that it probably would not be able to support itself. And once I had my outline all glued together and touched up, I used that cardboard again. Um, well, first I went and got two sawhorses downstairs from the garage and set them up. And then I put this uh, wooden part of the frame on the sawhorses. It's upside down, so you'd have to look up from the floor to see it. Um, put the glass acrylic in, and then I took the cardboard that has my 3D printed outline in it, and I just take it over there and slide, slide it in. Um, perfect. From there, uh, I spent a lot of time on the floor. I started laying out my stitch pieces, and then I'd get a little headlamp and uh, get underneath it and you know scrutinize it. Is, it. is it set perfectly? And I started using a low temperature glue gun and I put strategic uh, dots you know, just to hold the pieces there um, until I got the whole thing set up. But once I was satisfied with everything, I went back with the glue gun and reinforced, um, you know, put more uh, contact points just to keep things, everything in place. And then because there are variances depending on the different stitches and also the glue gun, I went and get, got some cheap, cheap quilt batting and just cut it and laid it over um, just to give it, like even it out before I put the cardboard backing on. And then finally I put a little note, um, you know, saying what it was for and giving credit to the people that helped me with the stitching. And then I put the backing on and then the American frame came with um, metal spring clips and yeah, that was super easy. Just used a flip head screwdriver to screw them in and then I was done. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope this gives you some inspirations of ways that you can marry 3D printing with maybe a craft or hobby that you already enjoy. Uh, hopefully I'll see some of you at Maker Fair Nova on Sunday, June 2nd. And if not, uh, put uh, East Coast Rip Rap Festival, Earth, on your radar. Uh, that's going to be in October this year, and I'm definitely going to be there, and hopefully I'll see you there too.